Hello Blender friends and welcome to another Super 3 Boy Blender tutorial. Now in today's tutorial we are going to go over UV mapping which is a very important feature in Blender so pay attention. Now a lot has changed uh, from Blender 2.4x to 2.5 so this is, might be a very helpful tutorial uh, for those who are kind of confused in the transition. Uh, now, in the previous tutorials, when we wanted to add a color uh, or any kind of design to our uh, mesh or object, we'd go into the Materials tab uh, and we'd change the color. Uh, so we could turn it red, blue, or green. And that would work for some cases, but uh, what happens if we wanted to add a texture or an image to our object? Well, there are ways to do that in the materials tab, but it doesn't give us a lot of control uh, over what we want to do. It just kind of uh, kind of slaps it on there, um, but we want a little bit more control. Um, so that's what uh, UV mapping does. So basically, uh, let's just think of this cube uh, that in front of us our default cube as a cardboard box so uh, we kind of want to texture and put stuff on it so uh, we kind of break it apart and fold it out flat color on it whatever you want uh, and then we fold it back up uh, so that's kind of how in the simplest terms uh, UV mapping works so uh, enough for the simple explanation let's just kind of get started and play around with it. So the first thing we have to do is kind of using the cardboard box example, uh, kind of set the points or the edges where we actually want to fold apart our 3D uh, object right here. So today we're actually going to use the default cube. Uh, we've been deleting a lot of times. Default cubes probably mad at us, but today we're going to be using him throughout the whole tutorial. So, uh, I'm going to click on Blender, and I'm going to zoom in a little so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to hit the Tab button to go into Edit Mode. So, I'm going to hit the A key to deselect everything. Go down here to the Edge Select Mode. Click on that. And basically, like I said, we're setting the seams or the parts uh, or the edges where we're going to take apart this box so we can... Uh, apply textures to it or images. So um, what you just need to do is just follow along and select the edges that I select. So I'm going to hit shift and right mouse button, click on this edge here, this top edge, these two left and right edges here, the two left and right bottom ones, and the two kind of behind there. So I'm going to hit the Z key so you can kind of see all the way through and see uh, the things or the edges that I selected and so you can just follow that and copy uh, what I did so from there uh, what we have to do is actually set this uh, with blender uh, we can do that with control E and then hitting uh, set seams but since we have a nice search uh, option available to us hit space S E A mark seams is right there for us so now that the seams are marked, we just hit A to deselect everything, A to select everything again. Now, uh, to use UV uh, mapping, we actually uh, have to do it in another window. This is our 3D view window right here. Um, but Blender has a bunch of different windows and modes that we can work in. So we have to open up a window to do that. Now we could do it down here and uh, select the UV image editor right here, but then we couldn't see our 3D view. So uh, in Blender 2.5, it makes it very, very easy to kind of split up the view. Uh, all you have to do is go in this top right hand corner right here, click, uh, left click on it and drag it to make two uh, distinctly separate windows for us to work in. So on our left we have our 3D view and on our right we have a 3D view but we're gonna actually change this. So we're gonna go down to this little box icon right there, click on it 
and go up to our view the image editor click on it little grid should appear all right so we're good so far so move your mouse over to the 3d view hit u unwrap and boom we have our uh, cube that's been unwrapped uh, into a flat uh, surface uh, that we can now apply uh, images and textures to. So, uh, I'm going to actually just kind of make this right side a little bit bigger. All you have to do is go to this little dividing bar, left click, and move this over a little bit. So we can have a little bit more room uh, where we're working. So we have all our faces here. I'm going to hit R. I'm going to rotate this. This works just like the 3D view. Uh, you're just uh, doing it kind of 2D instead of 3D. Uh, to, I'm going to kind of level it out. And then I'm going to try to keep it in within this gridded area. So I'm going to hit G and move it a little bit. And so just follow along and kind of do that. So I'm going to kind of try to show you uh, how... Uh, the images and the textures we apply here go on to this 3D cube. So I'm going to hit new and just kind of move away from the selection area uh, to get rid of it. We don't need to really adjust any of the options. Uh, you should see a black background or whatever the default uh, background color is uh, for your blender installation. Um, and this is fine. So I'm going to go to View, Properties. Uh, note that the shortcut key is also N. And I'm going to zoom out. I'm just using the middle mouse button to zoom in and out. Um, for the properties, then I'm going to go to Image, Image Painting. And basically, this just gives us a little uh, paintbrush to paint on the image. Uh, so I can show you, kind of show you how this works. So I'm going to left mouse button, click, and I can kind of draw on this. Um, but this is a little bit too big for what I want. So you can adjust this little paintbrush by going into the properties window that we just opened. I'm going to change it to red. Um, and then I'm going to just change the size down a little bit. Uh, it's a little too small, so let's bring that up to like 8. All right, so you see that little dot? That's basically where a paintbrush is. So I'm going to paint the numbers uh, 1 through 6 on here, and they should show up on our queue. So I'm just going to crudely paint with my mouse. One, forgive me, this is my mouse. I can't uh, really paint that well with it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Woohoo! It seems that Super 3 uh, can actually count to six. So in case you were wondering. So uh, right there we have one, two, three, four, five, six on our uh, UV uh, image editor. And we really don't need this uh, thing anymore. So just hit N to get rid of it. Make this a little bit smaller since we're going to be focusing on the 3D view now. And as you can see, nothing's showing up because we are in uh, the wireframe mode solid mode nothing shows up we have to go to textured mode to see uh, our textures on here so as you can see um, it's popped up uh, in here the uh, cruelly drawn numbers kind of show up on our 3d cube uh, with the corresponding faces so if we look here we drew a one in this little box right here and that was this particular face right here and so you can see the two and the three and the, let's find the fours over here. Um, so you can kind of see how we draw stuff over here and it corresponds uh, to the faces uh, over here. So if we were go to go render, render image, nothing would happen. So what we actually have to do is hit escape. We actually have to just mark a quick little checkbox in the materials tab. So we do have to go to the materials tab, but just to check a little checkbox so this will work. So all we have to do is hit the materials tab and click face textures. Done. Render, render image, and it should show up. So you can see that what's that the two and the six. 
So as you can see over here, there's missing a number. Um, well, that's because if you look out at our scene, at our lighting, uh, and we look kind of on this alt-left uh, mouse clicking to kind of free rotate to show you what we're doing here. So this is the camera, with the camera right here. This is the light source. And as you can see, the light source is kind of uh, shining on this cube, but this one is kind of uh, not getting any light because light shining from right to left. All right, so like I showed you in the previous tutorial, if you watch the scene tutorial, I said if you want perfect lighting, just turn on uh, ambient occlusion, uh, short, uh, some people just call it AO. So all you have to do is click on the world tab, this little earth button, click this checkbox. Simple as that, render, render image, boom. We have what we want. So we can see the one here. So I'm gonna hit escape. And so we I kind of showed you how um, the UV mapping works. But let's go into a more real world scenario. You're not gonna use in your bonus scene, I don't think, uh, a box numbered one through six. Uh, so let's uh, use a, a texture, an image, and put it on this box uh, and make it well, uh, a kind of wooden box. So if you were making a warehouse scene or whatever, you just wanted a bunch of boxes stacked up. Uh, well, using the material uh, method that we learned before, well, a little tan, little solid, but solid tan box is not gonna look that great. But if we have uh, an image of the side of a box and it's on all the sides, well, then it's gonna look more like an actual box. So uh, on my personal website, uh, super3.org, S-U-P-E-R-3.org. Uh, I kind of put out some free uh, textures that you can use uh, for your Blender stuff. Uh, updated regular, so check it out. Um, and I created a box texture using some, or a box uh, image uh, using some box, some wood textures that I had on there. And so I just threw this together in Photoshop. Uh, so you can see it here. Uh, you can download it uh, in the video description. There's a link to it. Um, and so to save you the trouble um, of going to Photoshop uh, or whatever image editing program that you might use, um, I created a layout uh, for us to use. This is the uh, one of them. And I'll show you the second one, which is a little bit better. Um, so this is called box layout 2.png and that's downloadable in the video description. So we're going to actually use this image right here. So before we do that, um, we're going to kind of move this over a little bit, uh, here. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to have another image um kind of placed here so what we can do we can just open an image go to my desktop go to box layout which i guess you've paused the tutorial and downloaded by now and hit open and boom uh, we have the image that's just on the background here and what we need to do is we need to line up uh these faces here with the actual uh image here as you can see it's not correctly aligned, and so it's just randomly thrown on the cube here. So we want to select our cube uh, with A. Let's just unwrap it. Let's go over here, and we have to select. Let's actually go into the vertice mode so we can do this right. So. select vertices here and I've done something wrong oh no so let's actually just get rid of this the X and then I'm just gonna load the image again open desktop box layout to open alright so we have just an editable um, editable it's not you can't eat it it's, it's virtual 
uh, we have an editable uh, little place just like our uh, 3D area. So we can just hit R to kind of straighten it out, G to kind of put it over uh, the actual image. And if you look over here, it should be uh, aligned all right. Uh, so just to add a little bit more to the scene, I'm going to uh, make the left view a little bit bigger and add a plane. Make that plane a little bit bigger. And I've actually created a plane inside uh, of the object, which is kind of what we don't want to do. Um, so let me actually teach you a trick from this mistake. Uh, if you have two uh, meshes uh, or a piece of a mesh in an object, so like a bunch of vertices, um, and you want to kind of separate them in two different uh, objects. All you have to do is select the part you want, hit P, hit selection, and it will split the selected part into a separate object. So I hit the tab key, and this is now a select uh, separate object. So hit the G key, I just selected it, moved it down to, let's get this exact, so I'm gonna hit the one key uh, on my numpad, hit the five key, um, to kind of correct the view, hit the G key and the Z key and just move it up to the top of our box here. All right, so now uh, you can see I've actually made a mistake. Uh, there's a little white part on the side because I didn't quite line it up uh, perfectly. So let's adjust this uh, just right. There we go. That should be right. You just gotta, you can see the changes here over here in real time. So you can just make sure you got your uh, faces lined up. And all we have to do is hit render, render image, and boom. We have a 3D box um, that's kind of a wooden crate um, that we created with uh, just some simple. Uh, UV mapping and it didn't take very long um, so basically this is what you can do uh, with UV mapping you can take a object you can uh, select uh, the seams or how you want to kind of fold out the object you'll create it uh, you'll make a flat uh, surface where you can apply an image or a texture to it now you can actually go into UV and export UV layout um, to save the uh, faces, the configuration of faces uh, as a PNG file or uh, whatever file. And you can go into Photoshop, Paint.net, GIMP, any image, or image editor that you uh, choose and kind of put uh, the textures or images that you want. Uh, like I showed you, just open back the image up you kind of align it correctly uh, with uh, the image. Uh, go to the Materials tab, select it, um, select the face textures, and hit Render, and you're good to go. You applied uh, an image uh, or a texture onto your object. Um, so that's really it for this tutorial. I, I hope you uh, learned a lot from this tutorial um, and you paid attention because it is a very important uh, feature of Blender. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Now before you go, it is not too late to apply to the winter contest that we have. There's four more days left. So I hope you guys go to form.nistic.com and check it out and test your skills. And if you missed it, well we have a contest every month. So come on over, test out your skills, and if you have any questions or problems, post them on the forum too. I'll be there and plenty other people uh, to help you with UV uh, mapping and any other problems you might have. All right, well, this is uh, Super 3 Boy, or Super 3, as you should now call me. I'm a little older now than when I started my tutorial. So this is Super 3 signing out, and I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial, which is on appending files in Blender.